Hey everybody, welcome back to Heart Breathings. It's April, it's Camp Nano. I cannot believe how fast this year is flying by. I have been in rest mode. I have been calling it my restorative rest mode, my hermit mode, because Q4 was super busy and then Q1 like was double busy. Renee and I were talking about this and since September, I have recorded and edited over 160 videos. <laughs> so it has been an epic amount of work, but I did it for a reason. And that is to create a six month period of time where I have space to get back to my writing. And I almost can't believe it that I'm going to be less busy, that I have cleared space, that I am going to get this gift that I'm giving myself of time to reconnect with my writing. So many of you are aware of this and you know that I'm doing something called the Writer Reset. So I originally hoped to have that first vlog up for you today. However, I needed more time off than I anticipated. So this is just your reminder that even though there might be people out there that are expecting things, that are wanting things, or even if you've promised or hinted at things, it's always okay to take the rest if you need it. And I needed it. Last week, I was traveling all week, went to a mastermind, and it was so amazing. This week, I have been slowly easing myself back into work. I had a massage, I got my first ever facial, and I have been cleaning the house, spending tons of times with the kids. Like, it was so funny, Renee and I had a meeting and Evie was practically like on my lap the whole time because I haven't spent as much time with her over the last couple of months as I normally do. And now that she's enrolled in school for the fall, I'm trying to soak up every minute. So this spring and summer season is going to be all about getting back to being a mom, being a full-time writer, and doing a little bit less of the courses and things like that. We'll still have the HB90 bootcamp, but I'm excited for the space that this has created. Now, I do have the Writer Reset Workbook for you to download. So there's a link down below to sign up for my newsletter if you want to grab it that way, or if you're already on my newsletter, like so many of you, you got a link to this in the HB Resource Library today. So go download that. We're gonna walk through it in just a minute. So this is going to be a long video. I have put timestamps and chapters there for you if you want to skip around. If you're just here for the notebook challenge, feel free to skip forward to that. But we're going to talk through the Writer Reset workbook. And then next week, I will have the beginnings of the vlogs where I'm going to be showing you how I'm actually incorporating this into my life. And hopefully, fingers crossed, you're going to start to see the writing flow through. And that's my main goal is to get back to the writing. I want to finish two books in the next six months and I know I can do it. So I'm just reconnecting to that. And I hope that if you have been off your writing game, if you have felt like that spark has been lost or you felt discouraged or you felt like there's just no reason in writing or that you're just disconnected to it, I hope that this will sincerely encourage you to get back to it because it's never too late, no matter how long you've been away from it, to get back into it. If this is something that speaks to your soul, that is a part of who you are, then find a way to revive it when the time is right for you. So that's what this is, kind of a writing revival. So let's dive into the workbook. And then after the workbook, we're going to go into our normal April monthly notebook challenge. Okay, let's take a look at the Writer Reset. This is going to be in your HB resource library. If you're signed up for my list, you got a link to download this today. But if you are not on my list, you can just head to the link down below, fill out the form on that blog post and sign up for my list. And this will get sent to you or downloaded right away. And then you'll also, the next email you get after you confirm your subscription, will give you a link to the entire resource library with my plotting and scenes and writer nano camp stuff, all kinds of little resources there. And I'll be adding a lot more this year as the year goes on. So I hope you'll come join us in the Hardy's newsletter. So this is the reset notebook. It's mostly just meant to be a little bit of journaling or kind of seeking inside yourself of what has held you back from your writing lately? What has helped like caused you to lose the spark? But what are the things also that have helped you in the past that 
made you first inspired to be a writer and kind of reconnecting with that piece of yourself. So some of these prompts might not apply to you or they might not appeal to you or they might not be helpful, but hopefully some of them will. So like things like I love to write because and just allowing yourself to reconnect with why do you love writing? How does writing make you feel? But lately my writing's been this. I wish that my writing was this. And sometimes just by journaling out these thoughts, not overthinking it, but just journaling through them can be super helpful to reconnecting and and understanding why your writing has been more of a slog or more difficult. Maybe you already know, but maybe it will help you sort of clarify what you wish your writing life could look like now. Then you have a journaling section here that says, take a few minutes to freely write whatever comes to mind when you think about your ideal writing life. Like what does an ideal day look like when the writing is good? How do you want to feel? So for me, this page is going to be something like, you know, on an ideal day, I would wake up and write first thing in the morning when my brain is clear and the ideas are flowing and I would spend a couple of hours on my writing and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So you just write what you want that to feel like, how you would like, how much time you'd like to spend, what inspires you. It can even include things like, I would love to spend more time reading or more time plotting or more time with friends online, talking about my writing, whatever it might look like for you. Then you also have another page that says, how much of that ideal writing life can you incorporate right now? Like in Q2, right now in your life or whenever you're watching this, if your current situation prevents you from having that ideal, then what can you change or add to your life now in order to inspire more joy in your writing? And a lot of times, you know, in my courses and stuff, when we talk about your ideal writing life or your ideal ideal writing day, people are like, should I do my ideal as my life is now or my ideal, like with no limits in the future, like if I didn't have a full time job, and you can just feel free to do it either way or try it out for both. So if if filling this out of what you want your writing to be someday, like if you didn't have a toddler at home, or if you didn't have a full time job, you know, whatever's holding you back from writing, and that inspires you, then write it out that way. If that makes you feel hopeless, that it feels so far away, then write it as what would an ideal day look like in your current situation? And either one can be helpful, but just always lean towards what makes you feel more inspired because some people are more inspired by the future and some people are not. So it just depends on your personality. And then here, when it comes to that ideal writing life that you pictured, what can you start doing now to bring that into your reality? So for me, it could be, okay, I'm going to make a goal for myself that I'm going to set this room up to be exactly what I want it to be. I'm going to reach out to some friends and see if we can set up a morning zoom call. I'm going to actually sit down and write and clear my schedule from nine to 11 every day to get writing, you know, so I can start incorporating some of those things now. Now I might not be able to incorporate them all tomorrow, but I could get started and create a plan for how I'm going to make that my writing life over the next three to six months, right? Then you have this fun sheet called creativity boosters. So I want you to brainstorm as many things as you can think about that are activities, environments, tools that help you feel more creative and joyful. So it could be things like every Every time I watch, you know, a specific TV show or anytime I'm reading in my genre or anytime I talk through my story with a friend, anytime I watch a heart readings video, anytime I read craft books, anytime I sit down and actually spend an hour of uninterrupted time, anytime I go to a coffee shop, when my room is clean, when I'm feeling good, when I don't have a headache, you know, just any, it can be literally anything that you think of that helps to boost your creativity. It could be meditation, going outside, going for walks, taking long showers, doing puzzles, like it, literally anything. Um, it could even be travel makes you feel that way. So think about those and just brainstorm as many as you can. Then on this page here is your reset plan. So thinking about your journaling that you did earlier and the list of creativity boosters on the other page, decide up to four main areas of focus to bring the spark back to your writing life. For each area, choose a set of tasks or actions to take. So for me, it's going to look something like, and some of these are going to seem unrelated, but I'll talk about it more as we get into my writer reset. So for one, it's the writing itself, right? And all I have is this green marker. So for the writing itself, then I also have to eat healthy because I know that if I eat the way that I support my PCOS, then the brain fog will start to lift and I'll have less headaches, less anxiety, things like that. Then also exercise because I don't have enough time in my life 
when I'm up and moving around and exercise gives me energy. But it also like if I go for a walk or I get on the treadmill for 30 minutes and I don't watch a show, read a book, do something else. And I just let my mind wander. I tend to start getting ideas. And I mentioned that my friend Shannon and Stacy uh, had an idea of putting a problem story problem on a post-it note and then allowing herself some thinking time to work through it. So I could say, you know, the climax of this book, like what's the climax and then put that post-it note up on the treadmill. And as I'm walking for 20 or 30 minutes, be thinking about that story problem while I'm walking. But there's something about the movement of my body combined with the thinking that gets the story ideas flowing a little bit better. Now, if I can talk George into going on walks with me, that would be nice. But then I also have, oh, I, it's the only one I wrote in small case, <laughs> organizing. So these are my four buckets that I'm going to use. So if I were filling this out, it might look something like for my writing, I'm going to be um, like coffee shop. So underneath each of these buckets, you write out the things that you can do like tasks or actions that you want to take. Um, so I could say coffee shop on Tuesdays because maybe that was something that was on my list. Also for the writing, I might say nine to 11 writing time daily. And then I might also say, uh, set up a Zoom with a friend. So you'd have these little things that you could put on here. For eating healthy, you know, I would put my meal plan or whatever here. Also, this is going to include some of my supplements that I'm taking. Uh, like I used to be really good at taking Ovacetol, which is really good for PCOS, and I just haven't been taking it, my vitamin D and things like that. So that could be here. For exercise, I could say treadmill with a, with a sticky note. <laughs> now, sometimes it is also helpful to go on the treadmill and, and watch a show. So if I wanted to like rewatch Buffy the Vampire Slayer or something like that, I could just watch a single episode every day on the treadmill or get on the treadmill twice so that I could watch two episodes if that was part of what made me feel inspired. So just work with whatever feels good to you, like daily walks or whatever it might be for you. Then with the organizing, this is to decorate my writing room and organize it. And it's also going to be different spots of my house. So it's going to be like my closet, my bathroom, drawers, and all of these things. And the purpose behind this for me, even though it seems writing unrelated to writing, is that working on these things then clears up my mind space, my mental space, that instead of walking around my house and feeling like I have all these things that aren't getting done that take up and make distractions of like all the things I have to get done. If I can keep things more tidy and more organized from the start, then I will be able to ruminate more on my writing. So all of these will kind of work together. So that would be my reset plan. Your reset plan could be all for writing things. So you could put coffee shop here, phone a friend here, writing time here, craft books here. And that is another thing that's going into my writing time is to read craft books. So you can make it really whatever it is, but there's something magical and hopefully you'll find it super helpful as well about identifying some areas and some tasks that you can take from your journaling and your creativity boosters, like the things that generally make you feel good that you can hopefully transform and get back to the spark and the ways that you you know want to get back to your writing to love your writing again and then there's a final sheet here in what other ways can you support your writing journey at this time if your writer reset is successful what will that look and feel like for you so i might write here something like you know if it's successful that will mean finishing the first book i've like first full-length novel i've finished in almost two years. And it will look like an established writing habit, a cleaner home, a clearer mind, you know, all these different things. And then other ways you can support your writing journey might be other things that kind of came up here of, oh, you know what, I could actually buy a new laptop, or I could uh, actually like make more time in my schedule to spend with friends that we can talk about writing, just whatever it might be other ways that you can find support. So that is your writer reset. I'll also be sharing how I'm incorporating this into my life in the next few weeks over uh, Camp Nano and everything through some vlogs that I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to share how I'm redecorating my room, how I'm getting back into my story, 
recovery, how I'm getting back into writing routine and that kind of thing. So if you're interested, as well as all the books that I'm reading and everything else, make sure that you're subscribed to this channel, go and sign up for my newsletter list or check your email to get your writer reset workbook. And now let's actually move into the heart breathings notebook challenge for today. Okay, so that is the workbook vlog starting next week. I cannot wait. I'm going to literally this afternoon start redoing my room in there and I can't wait to take you along with that. I've got all the books that I'll be reading, all the things that I'll be doing. I'll share that with you coming up and now we're going to head into our April notebook challenge. Yay. Okay, let's take a look at all the notebooks first. So I have a stack of things that I have been using and things that I want to be using. So first of all, I have the writer's notebook and this traveler's notebook that you guys saw me set up in a previous video is probably going to be my most used notebook um, for a while now. So look at how cute this little charm is. It's like a little Starbucks cup and everything. I love it. <laughs> so I have been working in this a little bit. I have my multi pin. So I had somebody ask me some of these are just hard to get off there. So this is the uni style fit multi pin. And this one has four no five colors in it. So I have red, purple, blue, black and green. And you can see it in this little window here, which one you're choosing. And I got this from jet pins. And I really love it, especially because I have in uh, book 12 of my Shadow Demon Saga, I have four main points of view. And so those colors are the colors that I use because they're so abundantly available pretty much across any type of pen. And then of course, there's just plain black. Now I have more colors than this in the Disappearance of Vanessa Shaw. So I've actually been carrying around a pen case that I love from Honey Bee Shop. And I actually um, I'm probably going to switch out my pen case coming up here soon. But I have been kind of writing in this notebook more than anything. And some of this stuff I don't really even want to share too deeply. But you can at least see I've been writing to about here. So I have been using this in um, some ideas, also some masterminding with some friends and some other things. So I have this notebook that I've been working in. This second notebook in the traveler's um, notebook section is black. And I feel like I constantly am attracted to using black notebooks and then I don't use them. So I have these pins that I got from Archer and Olive that are some of the gel pins. And I just kind of wanted to test it on here and just kind of put something to see kind of how it writes. Okay, so I think that in my little pin case, I'm going to put multiple pins because part of the reason I haven't been using it is because you need special pins like none of these pins in here, none of this ink will write on this paper. And so I have this in here now and I, I think maybe I will, I don't know exactly. I've got a few different ideas. I'll share it in more as I get into writer reset of how I want to use this black one. But for now, it's kind of just a superfluous notebook. And then I just have another um, divider here. And then I have my actual setup of my uh, main planner for the writing. So just a little bit of an update there that I have been using it. I have been like through a few different pages in it. So I'm just going to continue to work on that. I have kind of chosen my pen of choice that will go with it. And I just have a few others. I really would love to get a second pen loop maybe that I could put maybe on the front of one of these plastic parts so that I can keep that white pen in there. So it's with it all the time, but I have to say, I love the B6 size. It's making me very happy. So I do, I do love using it. And this is kind of my ride or die carry right now. And I'm looking forward to using it even more coming up along with that. So I can't even remember. So this is called into one and I got this on jet pens just because when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, that is so cute. But this is probably too or two and a half years ago that I got this. And it's like a little mini binder. I put the word plot on here from my Cricut at the time. And then it has these little mini clear rings. And then you can buy different inserts for it. So you've got paper that you can put in it. You've got little tabs you can put in it. And then you've got these little uh, plastic 
sheets that you can put. So what I had done in the past was used this as a reference for all of the plotting notes because I tend to use the three act structure, but I use things that I've learned across lots of different craft books. And so in order to not have to constantly go back and read just to kind of remind, like when I get stuck on, okay, what is it that I wanted to put into the midpoint? Sometimes it's just really helpful for me to go back to the craft books that I loved the most and see what they said about the midpoint. And that sometimes can just stir up ideas. It's like, even though I know what happens in the midpoint by now, it's just reading their words, their specific words. And it's not just one person. It's like James Scott Bell and Lisa Crone and um, K.M. Wyland and all of these people that I love, they all say it in different ways. And that's what I love about it. It's like we all know the three act structure, but it's just the way that someone puts their own spin on it is what's special. And so I have written down some of my favorite things from those books in terms of what these different pieces of the plot mean in this little notebook. And each little tab is a different piece of the plot. And so I wanted to continue to fill this out because I'm going to be reading more craft books. So this kind of goes back into the writer reset part of my plan for not only April, but for this entire quarter and maybe even for the next two quarters, I've set aside more time to kind of get back into my identity and my life as a writer. So I have this dot grid notebook that was a gift and I love it. This is from the UK. So this was from a UK subscriber and I, I love this. And I pulled this out, if you remember, last October <laughs> in the notebook challenge to read The Heroine's Journey by Gail Carriker. And I didn't get very far. So I did actually read a little bit more of the book than what I have marked here. But you can see on this one page, <laughs> Uh, please let me know in the comments so I know I'm not alone if you have sometimes had great ideas for how you want to do things and then you just kind of ran out of time or ran out of steam and so you have a journal that has like one page filled out and this does happen but you know I try not to beat myself up about it too much because here I am coming back to it in a time when it fits into my life and I just honestly feel like life is too short for us to beat each other up or to beat ourselves up over things that we don't follow through on perfectly because we we're human and life happens. And sometimes we, it's kind of like saying that your eyes are bigger than your stomach. Like I know that's one of the sayings that you, you might have, but it's like, sometimes we think the size of our plate in terms of productivity is this size. And then we realize as we keep piling things on that we've overfilled our plate. And so some things that aren't priorities in the moment get pushed back to later and that's okay. And it's okay if things never come back around. And it's also okay if they do and when they do. So give yourself a little bit of grace when it comes to that kind of stuff. I'm trying to do the same. And I'm also trying to come back into this notebook without feeling shame or guilt or anything else and just say, oh, I'm so glad and grateful that I'm coming back to this. So this notebook is really unique in that it has date and then subject, and then it has a, a line over here and then a line here. And this is all dot grid on the paper. It also has numbered pages. So it's like that throughout the entire notebook. And it has 304 pages, which is great. And then there's also a table of contents here. So you can say what page things started. So I'm planning to put over here a list of the books that I want to read. And then here, I'm going to start. Basically, you can see I'm taking out the points like the hero's journey is this the heroine's journey is this the strength doesn't diminish the heroine to seek and receive assistance. The approach is this. And I like being able to kind of outline it on the side. And this is just such a neat notebook. I'm probably going to need another one when this is done, but I'll be excited if I can fill this out. So I have an entire shelf that I have grabbed things or purchased new books uh, on craft that I'm going to be reading through to continue to solidify my identity as a writer as I have sort of moved off that past path over the last couple of years to focus more on course creation and help, you know, helping writers like as a coach and a YouTuber. And so I'm excited to kind of move back into that, which I'll talk about even more next week. But I have a whole list of books. So I will be sharing that whole list of books with you. The first one I'm going to continue to read is The Heroine's Journey, but I'm excited for the others. Some of the books that I'm going to be reading 
are books I've read before, but when I was more of a baby writer, like more when I was more of a brand new writer, and I think I didn't get as much out of them as I could. So I'm planning to read them again now that I have more of a solid like base understanding of story structure and dialogue and things from writing you know, 27 novels. So I'm going to continue on with that. And I'm, my hope and prayer is that, you know, as I read, I'm going to make my notes here. I'll also add anything that I want to keep into this. And I'm hoping that as I do that, more ideas will start to come up just because every time I have focused on craft books, I have been inspired to write. And so I'm grateful for every writer who has shared their knowledge in this because it's just incredibly helpful. So I will share some of those things and I will put them on a list on Amazon. So if you want to purchase and read along with me, you can. It would actually be so fun to do a craft book book club. That would be so neat. Let me know if that sounds like something interesting. Maybe we could do like a quarterly craft book book club. Brand new idea. We'll see how that pans out. Let me know in the comments. Okay, so that is the basis of the writing type stuff. There are other things that are kind of going on in my life this quarter that are important to me that I've been thinking about. So uh, where, <laughs> oh my gosh, so many things here. All right, pulling it out from this side over here. So I have been, it's kind of funny because I was determined that I was going to lessen the number of planners that I'm using this year. And I have, but at the same time, some of the simplica simplifications have worked really well. And some of the simplifications have not served me as well. Um, and then I've been adding some things in as I go as needed. And that's fine too. But I have this life planner. Look at this beautiful co cover. So this is brand new. I just got this in. This is from the Black History Month collaboration and I love it. You can change the background color. I think on the website it's purple, but I love this pink and I kind of wish I had gone. This is like maybe just too light of a pink. I wish I had gone more pink pink, but anyway, I just think this is a beautiful cover. This is the planner that I was supposed to be using for <laughs> social media. And as you can see, it pretty much, I just Publish and Thrive took over my life and I just didn't use it. So moving on, this was meant to be like editorial calendar and time tracking stuff. And then the other side was meant to be social media and it just didn't get used. So we're going to try again for the next three months. Now I set this up as a six month planner. So if it doesn't work for me in these next three months, then I'll do something different for the next half of the year. But for the month of April, like it has been helpful for my editorial calendar, I will say that. But in terms of actually tracking my time and tracking my social media has not been helpful. So I'm going to restart, retry. I did, um, I was taking this course from Social Curator about social media engagement tips and things like that and how to plan your social media. Because this is one place that really almost all of my social media other than events like spectacular or bit, you know, bigger, like five day challenges or stuff like this. My social media has basically just been, if I feel like posting, I make a post. If I get an idea for a reel, I make a reel and that has worked. I still have, you know, lots of followers on social media to a degree. However, I do also feel like it would help me not only emotionally, but also would help me grow if I had a more of a plan in place for my social media. And it's just a place where I have struggled to make decisions far enough out to uh, actually plan and schedule my social media far enough out. So I'm going to try it. If you have a system for how you, it's like, it's not a problem to schedule the posts. The problem for me is sitting down and actually making the decisions about what the content is going to be. So if you have a content strategy for social media, let me know. But I was using this super cute kit from Coffee Monsters Co. And I love it to just to make notes about her engagement tips and how to make your plan and what types of things to post. So I'm continuing with that here. And then I'll also continue it on these pages so that I can always come back. So I have this little tab here, this bow tab, so I can come back and say, okay, here's the tips that she shared. Here's the category she says to post in that kind of thing. So I've, I did do some work there. I also have plans. I was going to do a vlog today. Instead, it's a notebook challenge. So you can see I'm already kind of off. So I need to fix that. 
but the rest has been so nice, you guys. <laughs> um, and then this week I was hoping to plan. And again, you can see I didn't. So I think the key for me is going to be, I can't show up on Monday and then expect to plan without some kind of space and some kind of system for when and how I'm going to post because I have two Instagrams, two Facebook groups, you know, like, well, actually I think I have six Facebook groups, two YouTube channels. It's just, I need a system. And so that's part of what I'm hoping to get done in this next quarter. So it's part of my uh, goals for goal one for Sarah Cannon brand and goal two for Heart Breathing's brand is to come up with a social media content strategy. So that will involve this. And I know this is more of like a planner than a notebook, but it is kind of like a hybrid. So I did share it here. Um, I had this cute little posting checklist that I kept up with th for three weeks. So we'll see if I can keep it up with, you know, with it for the next quarter. Uh, but my goal is to be able to use these focus pages as my actual social media plan. So I will let you guys know how that turns out. But so far, this has not been amazing. But I do say I love having this as a Franken planner, I just need to get the system that works best for me. But I was only going to use that one. And then I have another one that I'm using for family memory planning. However, I decided um, to, as part of my six months for life goal, which is goal number three in my heart breathings, um, HB 90, to start taking care of my health better. And this is also part of writer reset, which I'll talk about more um, in the in the coming weeks. But I know that so part of having PCOS polycystic ovarian syndrome is brain fog, depression, anxiety, and a lot of other things that are like the way that my body reacts to food, exercise, stress, sleep, water intake, all of those kind of things. It's like, it's an endocrine disorder. And basically my body is very affected by the things that I put into it. And the more I fill it with things that are inflammatory, like dairy, flour, gluten, you know, different things like that. And different things are inflammatory for different people. So this is not like a health lesson, but it's just for me and my, um, my personal journey. The more I get, you know, I struggle with anxiety, struggle with brain fog and things like that. And when I talk about going back to being my best self as a writer, and I think back to my best year as a writer in 2018, when I wrote five books, it's the most I've ever written. And I, it felt easy in a way, like it wasn't easy, but it felt easier than it had in years past. And I know that part of that was because I was really taking care of my health in terms of what I was eating. And I know that eating stuff can be really triggering for people. So I don't want to dwell, you know, dwell on it here. I'll just say that for me in my personal journey, it was really important for me as a writer to do what I could to clear the brain fog, whatever that meant for me as an individual. So I decided I wanted to start keeping track of my food. And so I pulled out, I was actually going to use a happy planner, I thought, because I had one. But then I decided I didn't really like the, I had a fitness planner. Um, and then I decided I didn't really like the layout for that because it had like a place for snacks and some other stuff and I'm not going to be eating snacks. So I like actually found in my Franken planner stash that I still had pieces of an Erin Condren planner from this year that was from an 18 month planner that they gave me, you know, like a year ago when they launched the new designs. And so I put it together. Some of the pages are the pages like the ones that I had used here that I had kind of stolen from the previous planner, but I was able to kind of put this together and that really made me happy in terms of being able to reuse this planner. So it only goes from April to the end of the year. And I have put different things here. I've got my, I don't know really how I'm going to use the monthly. I might just, if I decide I want to, I might just put in here um, encouraging words or, you know, pictures of what I'm eating or anything that seems happy or fun along the way. Like, oh, I noticed more energy on this date and stuff like that. Then I also on this page kind of wrote out some of the things that I want to do and look how beautiful these stickers are. Like, it's just so, so pretty, <laughs> but like what supplements kind of what my weekly meal plan is going to be, what I want to eat, um, how much water I want to drink, that kind of thing. Um, and then I have, I'm going to keep track each week of what I'm going to eat and what my steps are going to be. And I'm pretty excited to not only be able to use stickers in a way that supports me and is, is like for me. And I know 
I always say this and it sounds so silly to people that don't really get it. But if I have a beautiful way to track my progress and to hold myself accountable in a way that makes me happy, like using stickers, using something beautiful, using a planner, it always makes me more successful because I'm such a visual person that if I'm not, if I'm just holding it all in my brain, it's not going to get done. But if I'm tracking it and I'm keeping an eye on how I feel and, and journaling it or using beautiful stickers, it just makes me happy. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. And I will just kind of also say that I went a little bit crazy kind of buying stickers. So let me know in the comments if you guys would be interested in seeing a sticker haul. I might do it on Instagram instead of here, but I bought some from Orange Umbrella Co. Tons of stickers from them. Uh, this is also from that shop. I have some from Paper Dove Shop. This one is from Sticker Guru. Like, look at that pack of stickers. I'm so happy. And then I also have these from, uh, let's see, Mama Bear stickers. And then there's a few, I think there's a few more down here at the end that, where was this from? I don't know, it doesn't say, but I had several stacks. I also had this one stack of stickers. So anyway, I bought a lot of new stickers. This is another pack of, of stickers here, stickitpretty.com. So if you're interested, I've been, I'll show you these in a minute, but I've been using these journaling stickers a lot too, not just the like Erin Condren vertical stickers, but also these journaling stickers. And I really love them in my nightly planner. So lots of fun stickers, making me happy, helping me with the hard parts of, of changing my lifestyle. So I've, I've been doing it all week this week, keeping track and it's working so far. So one day at a time, but that is this new kind of notebook slash planner. So this is the Mo term that you guys saw me set up. And just to kind of, I think you can see kind of an example of some of those journaling pages. Let me see. So here's some examples of some of those journaling pages or journaling stickers that I just pull out the journaling page. And then I've got several days that I can use just one sheet to really use them throughout. So I've been keeping up with this Sterling ink on a nightly basis really well. And if you want to see like one of these journaling pages, it looks like this. And just this one page can help me when I'm journaling, decorate like five or six pages of journaling. And this is from Hello Petite, Hello Petite Paper. And they're so beautiful and they just, they all match. And so the color scheme looks good together. So I've been enjoying all the sticker shops that have journaling kits. So if you know of any more, let me know because I'm loving them. And then finally, the next one that I've been using is this cloth and paper that I bought, I don't know, a while back. This is classic happy planner size, but I have redecorated it. So it was decorated up with all purple and I have changed it to red and pink. So again, another subscriber gift was these uh, red dragonfly discs that I love so much. And then I bought this uh, from... I'm not sure. I'll see if I can put it in the description, but a little custom cover. I also got, so this is another one of those beautiful charms. So both of these, the one that's the Starbucks one and this one that says faith over fear, faith is my word for this year, come from Charming Planner Shop. So I will link her store below as well and her Instagram, which is really cute. So I just decorated this up. You guys know how much I love my pockets and decorating it and how much joy that brings me. But this is my Manifestation Babe Academy try over. So again, speaking of giving ourselves grace for what season we're in, I purchased the Manifestation Babe Academy uh, course, which is a 20 week course uh, a couple of years ago and never finished it. I think I made it to week six and didn't finish. So she's running it again. And as an alumni, you can go through it for free. So I am now again on week four. And so I have been keeping all my notes and things in here. I have purchased a few extra things from cloth and paper, like these really pretty linen stickers to kind of keep track of some of the things that I've been working on. I also purchased some really 
here's another one of those dashboards. I purchased some nice inserts from Cloth and Paper because I really love her paper. It kind of has that toothy, thick feel to it. So these are just similar types of inserts to that notebook that I'm using for plotting where you have the side outline and then you have the notes. It's just my favorite way to take notes and I love notebooks that have that. So bought those inserts from cloth and paper. So I have them throughout. And then I also have just some basic note paper from cloth and paper that I put in here that I've been using for notes. So the way that I have incorporated this course into my life, because what I was trying to do before was watching it all at night before I went to bed. And then I ended up staying up too late or I didn't get a chance to watch it or George wanted to spend time with me. So now what I've done is I've set up a thing like this, like this little um, tablet holder in my bathroom and I have put my iPad on it in the morning. And so every morning when I go to get ready for the day, I have at least 15 or 20 minutes where I'm brushing my teeth, putting on makeup, whatever, that I can listen to the videos. And I've been listening to them at one and a half speed so I can get through an entire video every single morning. And that has been really helping me a lot to be successful with this. And the only other, so I have a few new notebooks I'm going to show you, but the only other notebook that I've been using, and I hope this will show up with, it's going to have a little bit of a glare. Let me turn this light off. Does that work? All right. That might help a little bit. So in good notes, I love to use notebooks, unlimited notebooks, right? So I have one for six months for life. So for me, this will take course over <clears throat> or take place over two quarters. So I didn't really follow through with any six months for life stuff last quarter because it was so busy. So I'm doing a six months for life starting in Q2 and then it will also be in Q3. So I have things I want to accomplish, like getting really clear about what I want and what I'm doing. Then I have four things that I'm focusing on. So this is part of the six months for life. So four things I'm focusing on within this goal. So writing, eating healthy, exercising, and organizing. And then what I've done is I have created vision boards for each one of those four areas of focus. Now I did kind of scribble these out for now because these are book covers that I didn't want to share. But one is to write. Obviously, this is one of my number one. And my my the way that I'm working this is like goal number one in my three goals for HB90 is my writing goal. But goal number three is my six months for life goal. And within that, I'm going to be doing things that will help support my writing. So these goals are kind of working interchangeably. Eating healthy, exercising, and organizing our home. So these are the four goals and four areas I want to focus on. So I did a vision board for each of them and then started some journaling on things I want more of. Then I'm also going to keep track here of anything that I have that are plans to help me. So that one of the first projects that is in this goal. So in HB90, we set goals and then we set projects to help us achieve that goal. And then we determine the tasks underneath it. So the first big project in this is to set up my creator cave, which I was previously calling my witchy writer room. So this is what it looks like now with the closet and my space. Here are some of the plans of things I'm going to buy to get it more set up and more organized. And then I will also include like after pictures once that's done. And then of course, on my Kanban board, I'll have the individual tasks. So just another way you can use notebooks in your daily productivity and life that makes me happy. Then I also have some new things that I'll just share briefly. So in my rest time, rest period here, I have also, um, I made a little, I got a Erin Condren warehouse order, but I also made a little trek to the Erin Condren store in Austin when I was meeting up with some friends. So got a few new things. So this came from the warehouse sale. This is just a teal sort of vegan leather cover with a plain notebook on the inside. So I don't have a use for it yet, but it will go in my notebook closet and I will love it and use it. This I thought was really interesting. So this is a productivity planner. I'm probably going to replace this cover, but even though it says 2023 on the cover, it's undated and it has undated monthly. Then it has a habit tracker that's room for like maybe 30 habits here. Then you've got a productivity page with a checklist and then you have a bunch of checklist sections. And I just thought this was really clever. Then you also have some note pages and then it goes back to the next month. 
So I wanted to share this with you guys. I, I don't know exactly how I'm going to use this yet, but if you, since it's undated, I figure I'm not in any rush, but if you have a specific project or specific habits that you're trying to cultivate, this would be really neat to like, for example, keeping a list of all the ways I'm going to change that room up or um, habits like, did I watch my video this morning? Did I, you know, brush my teeth, make the bed, that kind of thing. And then you can keep track of any little projects and tasks here. So this would actually even work with HB90 if you wanted it to. So just kind of a neat little notebook. And I'm guessing there's 12 months in here, but I didn't count them. And then you have some stickers in the back as well as a folder. So I hadn't seen this before, but I saw it in the store and I was like, okay, I'm going to grab that. And then finally, just this Flora softbound notebook, which I already have a lot of softbound notebooks that I haven't used yet, but I couldn't resist it because it was just so pretty and it was on sale. So a uh, sucker for even more notebooks than I need, which is, you know, par for the course. But anyway, super love that. So let's talk about our notebook giveaway for this month, which is going to be this punctuate journal that has these cute little cactuses, cacti on them. And it has a cute, colorful spring motif here in the front, it has green, dark green lined pages. And this is pretty narrow ruled. And I think these are great notebooks. I really enjoy writing on them. It has a lot of pages in it. It has a back page as well as a back folder there. And then I was thinking that it had a ribbon, but it doesn't seem to have a ribbon in this one, but it does have a, a elastic enclosure. And I'm also going to send this planner society, excuse me, this planner society pen with it when it goes out. So just all you have to do to win this is, or all you have to do to enter to win is make sure you're subscribed, make sure to like this video and comment down below on how things are going for you or what you would do with this notebook. However you want to comment, I would love to see your comments down below. Super cute notebook from Punctuate. I got this at Barnes and Noble years ago and just never used it. So I'm excited to pass it on to somebody who will use it. Also, I want to talk about our diverse read for this month, which isn't actually a book. It's a book box. So let's take a look. Okay, our diverse read is actually a book box that is a curated box of black literature. So build a black literature library of your very own. We offer fiction, nonfiction, indie, and YA quarterly book subscriptions. So four times a year, you can get your favorite fiction or be introduced to a new author for YA, indie, fiction, nonfiction. And this is one of the only places that I've really seen even indie books be called out like this. And I just love it. Plus, I love the creator of this, Jamila. She is an amazing woman. You can read more about her and why she created this. She's a former librarian. And this is just really cool. And I love her passion for this. So you can definitely come check that out. There's also a little gift shop here where you can get some different swag or other items that are related to the books or to the bookstore or just other things like that. Now, obviously, call number comes from the call number in a library. So it's a really creative way. You can also sign up for gift cards if you wanted to gift this to someone. And when you click on join now, you can choose. So you can choose the complete quarterly fiction box, which is um, more than just the book. So it says it consists of newly released literary fiction book with three to four library related or book themed items and a library packet. So this is another thing that makes it really cool because you're actually building your own personal library of black literature. So you get a catalog card, a spine label, a label protector, and the logo sticker for a call number box. So it's just really creative and really cool. So then you have a quarterly nonfiction box, the quarterly indie box, the quarterly YA box, or for a lesser price, you can just get the book that includes the library packet, but it doesn't have the extra swag and different things like that. Um, and you can get that for all four kinds. Now, there's also, if you really want to go all out, you can get the deluxe quarterly all genre box that has all four books related to the quarter, nonfiction, young adult, indie, et cetera, and fiction, including two to three curated items, one deluxe item, and the library packets for each of the books. 
So you can see here, like if you select this fiction box, you can choose to get just one quarter if you want to start, or you can go ahead and prepay for two, or you can go ahead and prepay for the full year and maybe get a slight discount. So you can also give them as a gift. So check out Jamila's website, call-number.cratejoy.com, and there's a full explanation of it. You can even do some book club stuff with it. It's just really neat, and I love her and definitely want to support this. I am going to be signing up for the quarterly indie box. So come join me if you want to get some good reads. That's our notebook challenge for the month. I hope that you will subscribe if you are new here. Welcome writers and entrepreneurs, creatives of all types, even if you're just here for the planning and notebooks. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so grateful for all of you. This channel and this community is one of the greatest blessings of my life. And I just hope you know how much I appreciate you and how much I love you. All right, we are done. Epically long video. I hope you enjoyed it. Go and grab your writer reset workbook. If you'd like, let me know if you have any aha moments of, oh, I didn't realize this is what I was missing, or I didn't realize that I need Needed to bring this tool back in my life or anything that you're going to be doing because I would love to hear more about your plans, feel free to come join us in my Discord server. I have that linked for you in the description box below. If you want to join the Hardy's Hangout, if you want, we could even create a channel called Writer Reset for anybody who's doing the Writer Reset this summer or spring. Or if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, don't want to forget you, fall and winter coming up. So we are done for the day. I am so glad to be back. Thank you so much for giving me this little bit of extra time. I know several of you reached out on Instagram asking if I was okay. And yes, I am more than okay. I am happy and I'm excited, but I was just taking the rest that I needed after a long period of hard work. And now it's all about creativity and joy and excitement. And I couldn't be more grateful and excited for the month to come. So hope you'll join me on this journey and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. <laughs>